Welcome to iReport University. In this video series, we'll show you the basics of how iReport works, plus several helpful tips for working with fishbowl inventory reports. On one hand, iReport is deprecated software, meaning that it's no longer developed or supported by its authors, Jaspersoft, and it hasn't been for quite some time. It's also relatively difficult to find support resources online. On the other hand, it's quite powerful software, though it does have some limitations. In this series, we'll be demonstrating iReport in conjunction with Fishbowl Inventory because Fishbowl is likely the largest entity currently using iReport. In case you're not familiar with Fishbowl Inventory, it's the top inventory management software for use in conjunction with QuickBooks, Desktop, and Online Zero, with many online shopping carts and other integrations, and generally a very impressive software system with significant improvements added monthly and from a truly great company, top to bottom. If you'd like a personal introduction to find out how well Fishbowl can help you improve your business processes, let me know and I'll be happy to put you in touch with someone who can answer all of your questions. This video series will not cover iReport installation and setup, but you can find all of these instructions at fishbowlinventory.com slash wiki slash iReport. If you are already a Fishbowl user and you have a current support contract, the support team will assist you with setup if needed, but they cannot help you with the actual iReport operation. One reason is that very few support techs use iReport at all. And another is that troubleshooting can be rather difficult and time consuming, especially when troubleshooting someone else's project. Of course, there's always the Fishbowl Reports team who will build reports for you for a fee, and maybe you could hire them to finish or fix a report you've begun, but they're also far too busy to provide training or help you troubleshoot your report. Okay, let's begin with this very simple report, aptly named. This one happens to show open sales orders along with the customer name, the sales rep on the order, and the schedule date for the order. It also includes a sales rep filter, so you can narrow down your results by that. In iReport, you'll see that this report is divided into various bands. For example, some items are here in the page header, and the page header is very similar to the title band, except that the title band appears only on the first page of the report if it runs into multiple pages, whereas the title repeats on every page. So there's the page header, here's the column header, which goes over the items that repeat in the in the detail band and you can grab these and uh, expand them you can also double click below them to snap it up to the bottom of the lowest item there the detail band this is where we see our actual results the sales order number customer etc and the fancy thing about the detail band is that it repeats endlessly as long as you have results so in this case we have eight open sales orders so detail band repeats itself eight times. Column footer is similar to the column header, but in this case, we don't have it, but you could expand it and put something there like, like some grand totals or something if you like. And then there's the page footer. In this case, it contains the date and uh, page numbering. There's also last page footer if you were to add a band here, then you could add something that would be different for only the last page rather than the bottom of every page. Summary band is very similar to page footer, except that the page footer always positions itself at the bottom of the page and summary will kind of suck itself up and right up against the bottom of whatever data you have there. You can add a no data band. So you could put a message here in case you are looking for something like a, a sales rep who doesn't happen to have any open orders, then it would give present this message rather than a blank page. And you can add a background if you want to add images or something to, to the back of the page. Above the report, WYSIWYG, you see we're looking right now at the designer tab. You could also click the XML, which shows the code of everything that's appearing on the page. And this can be useful if you are an experienced programmer, 
but be careful because you can also corrupt your report by making little mistakes there. Preview, I kind of recommend not using that. You have to have it, iReport set up connected to the database just right. You can cause the report to freeze and stuff. So I prefer to just compile it and then view it in the Fishbowl client instead. You also see here, this is the actual query. So let's take a look at the query, which is going to the database and extracting the data to display on the report. So you can see we're grabbing the company name, today's date, and SO numbers, and of course, um, all of these things repeat for each sales order number that we happen to have. And then there's the joins where we start from a sales order number and, and connect to the matching customer and sales rep and so forth. And we have our where, and here's where we plug in that, that salesperson filter, the parameter, which displays in the modify report window, like so. and a group by. This video series will not go into MySQL and how to write it and how to join it, but let me give you a few tips. First, if you're just learning MySQL, I recommend going to w3schools.com. This is probably the most popular code learning and reference resource online that even experienced report writers often go there for reference. Just remember the precise syntax for some function that they don't use very often. Also in a moment, I'll show you a couple of resources which can help you get more familiar with code and how it's put together. And also with the joins, like how these tables connect, because it's one thing to know MySQL, it's another to know how to connect the tables correctly. Here below you have the read fields button. And if you click this, then it, iReport will run this query and create all the fields in your select statement. And if you click this button, automatically retrieve fields, then as you type, it will continually run this and add new fields as you add them, which can be convenient, but can also be a hassle because sometimes maybe something is coming in as a, you need it to be a double, but it reads in as a big decimal. And so it changes that back. And uh, so I like to leave it off unless I've got a new query with a bunch of fields. I want to include there. On the right here, you see the available parameters, so you can drag those into the query as needed. And then there's also, of course, the zoom buttons and the compile button. So once you're ready to actually compile a report, you click this. Let's make one little change and watch this in action. I'm just gonna change the color on this header. Compile the report down here below. You see that it's compiling. If there were any errors, many of the errors will be caught here and it will tell you what needs to be fixed. Although some errors can get through that compiler check and you won't be notified until you run the report in Fishbowl. Now, when we refresh the report, we see that it has become purple Let's take a look now at the properties table. Uh, this is an area which shows many details and options depending on which item you have selected either in the designer or in the report inspector. So in this case, we have position information, color, and other details for that. If we, if we check one of these items, which is not just static text, but something active, you notice you get some more options. For example, you can say, I want this, if, if it's too long to fit in this column, I want it to bump down and expand and stretch. And you can say, make that relative to band height. And another common one, a good one to be aware of is this pattern expression. So in some cases, like this case, if I click on today, this is returning a date with a time but I want to use this variable, which has already been designed to make that look like a nicer date rather than, for example, on the scheduled column, you'll notice I do not have a date format. And so it comes out just as the date time itself. Finally, let's take a little closer look at a few of these items over here on the left. So you can add styles, which you can 
assigned to something and then whatever aspects of that style will be applied to whatever or whatever you set that to so for example if we click date for ship and we go to its style drop down and say 12b now that made it too large to fit in that window because 12b must have a larger font size so there's an example of that next you have the parameters and you've already been introduced to the salesperson parameter and these things up here when you click the modify report button that's what shows up here and depending on some of the settings of the parameters they may appear on different tabs here for example if we made uh, the salesperson required by clicking the use as a prompt now if i compiled it you'd see a new tab appear called required and it would show up right there uh, some of these other parameters work in the background so don't, don't need to worry about those oh and on that note let me point out it's a good idea rather than starting from scratch to start from an existing report and modify it. it usually makes it much easier but if you do start from scratch here's one thing that will trip you up and you'll be lost and confused and frustrated because you're just not aware and that is language if you click new it starts out as groovy but set that instead to Java Next for the fields, you see these are the things that we selected in the query, and each one has a type. So most of these are strings, a couple of more dates, and as I've mentioned, sometimes things come out as big decimal, but MySQL can't do certain operations on, on big decimals, so I'll often change those to doubles. Next come the variable, the variables, and you've already been exposed to a few of these. So date format puts it into a nicer looking format. Cost decimal puts a dollar sign in front of it and, and sets the decimal points to two through four decimals, whatever you have set in your fishbowl system. Quantity decimal is similar. Usually narrow it down to two decimals, price decimal and stuff, all things you can control within fishbowl. And then these settings react to them. And then finally, there are scriptlets, and I'm not going to go into these advanced tools. One other thing worth noting is that if you want to write code here in the properties, like in the print when, this does not use MySQL. This uses Java. So you'll write Java code for that area. I promised to share with you a few more tips and tricks for how to get more familiar with MySQL and with the database structure and how it fits together and joins. So here are three of those. The first time one is that every time you run a report, the server log captures this information. So you can click on the server log button. And if I had had any errors, by the way, it would show up here. And you look for the, not these indented ones, but the ones right before it. And often that tells you, oh, there's a missing sub report or you have an error on such and such the spot of your report or whatever. But in this case, we're going to click on the reports tab and this captures the actual select statement. So you can run any report in Fishbowl and come here and look at its query without opening the actual report. Now, sometimes reports are built with multiple layers of queries, so it can get more in depth than just our simple one. But you can also, step two now, tip two, you can copy this, so I'll control C, and you can take this to the data module, which is also under the reporting menu. And I'll click new, and I can paste it right in there, and I can run it here and do tests, which is much quicker than changing it in iReport and compiling and testing it again on in the fishbowl client you'll notice here however there's a little question mark and this is because every time that there's a parameter for example if we look at the query um, you see here there was like salesperson well fishbowl doesn't know what to do with that that's something that runs after the report has been compiled so when you click on the server log and look at the reports tab it converts these into um, question marks so you can quickly find them and change them into something that will work and then you can click the little green arrow or control enter to actually run it and here are those three open orders with julie as the sales rep that we were looking at tip number three is also found right here in the data module and it's here on the tables tab. So here you can you can find anything. If I type SO, it jumps down to the sales order table and I click enter. 
and it pops this open. So these, this is the actual information where all of the sales order information is stored. And let's, let's hop over, let's look at a couple of those orders we were looking at in our report. So we'll go to the status ID and let's order it by that. And that will lump all these open orders together. So we've got status ID 20, these are issued. 25, these ones are in progress. Maybe they've been committed or, or picked or something like that. And then if we scroll back over a little bit to the left, we'll go back to our salesperson. Um, and here we've got you know, some by Julie, a couple by Dave, etc. Now you might be wondering, wait a minute, how am I supposed to know what status ID 20 and 10 and 50 are? Well, most of the tables in our table uh, <laughs> group are named fairly sensically. So I'm going to type in SO status and lo and hold, behold, it jumps right down to the SO status table and there you've got it. ID 20 is for issued, 25 is for in progress. As soon as you ship it, it changes to 60 or if you can close it short, etc. So anyway, there are some tools that will help you get more familiar as you look around and as you're looking for information to, for how to put these all this together. And one final helpful tip is that I highly recommend that you install iReport on your Fishbowl server computer. And then when you compile your reports, save them into the custom folder in Program Files Fishbowl Server Reports Custom. That way, as soon as you compile it, all you need to do is refresh here rather than re-upload it or copy it over to your server computer. Do not manually create the custom folder if it's not already there, by the way. Instead, go to your reports module and upload a report. You can pick any one you like from, from any one of these. Just uh, pick a Jasper and upload it, and then you can right-click and delete it because you don't really need to see it down there. But by doing this, that creates the custom folder for you and in a way that Fishbowl can recognize. And furthermore, if you do begin from an existing report, for example, if you want to go in and update one of your sales order reports, do not open the file from your sales order folder and compile it there. It will override your existing report, but as soon as you update Fishbowl again, then it will reinstall the current default version and any changes you've made will be overwritten. Also, there's a pretty good chance if you're new at this that you're gonna mess up the report and then your default report will be broken. So make a copy of it and save it to the custom folder. You'll notice these two different file types. The JRXML file is the one that you actually modify and work with in iReport. And when you compile it, that creates a .jasper file. And that's the one that you upload to Fishbowl to actually view, view there. But if all you have is the Jasper file, no problem. Just open that and iReport will ask you whether you'd like to convert that and create a JRXML from it. And then you can program that as you like. Thanks for tuning in to this overview of iReport from iReport University. Stay tuned as we create additional videos which go into more depth in various aspects of this functionality. And enjoy your day.